actually start, start taking some small arms fire. Contact right, start engaging up top, start engaging. Contact left, start engaging. Uh, one guy hitting the back behind us. One thing I've learned from VR is that it's very easy to fool the brain. There's remnants of uh, soldiers, uh, enemy soldiers on the ground everywhere and just very kind of surreal, kind of like, I don't, like I'm not really there. If you do VR well, they engage in the environment as if it's the real thing. It's evocative of the emotions that that environment is designed to provoke or induce. The power of VR is nothing short of a paradigm shift in how we consume media. You're in the story, you're in the world, and that is where the power of VR is important for psychology and for treatment. The use of VR actually helped me get, get me past a sticking point with my traditional therapist, and I couldn't really delve deep into what was bothering me. My symptoms with the PTS were pretty much the entire gamut. It starts, unfortunately, at nighttime with not being able to sleep. I never got to sleep deep enough where I would hit, hit nightmares, um, which leads to the next day. Irritability, a lot of anger issues, uh, avoidance of my past, things that happen, or uh, dangerous situations. I was, well, first off, you know, I was really hesitant to come forward saying I need help. That's the biggest, the biggest problem with myself and other vets is just the, the stigma around PTS. I uh, was looking for an alternative, um, start asking around, I heard about Skip's work with virtual reality. We never know what's going on in the hidden world of imagination. Some people aren't good at visual imagery. So what VR does is allow us to put people in the context in which they were traumatized and we're able to gradually help them to go in and confront these stimuli while a clinician is right there with them. Okay, describe what you're thinking as you're pulling out. Um, glad that we made it all okay. Uh, I think I reacted all right. As the patient is narrating their experience, the clinician has a control panel where they can control the time of day, the ambient sounds, uh, an explosion in the distance, a helicopter flying over, all the elements that are reminiscent for that patient of their trauma experience. Every little thing I saw could be one normal person's traumatic experience, like seeing like helicopters blow yards around top of a bridge shooting into the side of a mountain, and, you know, Marines shooting, Marines getting shot at, Marines getting killed, seeing, uh, seeing them attack us and them being injured. So you see it, you don't process it, you put it away, you start engaging somewhere else, and you're trying to save your life and do your mission at the same time. We're never going to replicate an, an exact simulation of what the patient went through, but we don't need to. As long as we hit the high notes and get close enough, patients bring in their own memory, their own experience, and kind of fill in the gaps. You're going to face your demons. There's a burning, uh, burning victims all on the road. They're pulling them out right now. But if you can hang in there and get through it, it gets better. We're not creating a self-help tool. We're giving clinicians a tool that may extend their skills. So it really opened the door and let me kind of begin my healing process. This is really a leap forward in my progress and it's really been beneficial. It's a unique way to unlock the things that your mind pushes down because it's in a dark, scary place. And that's the end of the scenario. Okay. Good job, good job.